Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and in this video we're going to talk about Kubernetes. What is Kubernetes? Uh, the first thing I'm going to write is the word Kubernetes because I want to explain something super quick. So this is Kubernetes, right? All right. So Kubernetes is uh, is a name that originates from Greek. It means it means a helmsman or pilot. And one thing that you'll notice, uh, or well, that you'll note about Kubernetes, is that it's sometimes abbreviated, and this is the, it's the saying the same thing is K8S or K8s. And literally, that eight, the reason that it's like that is because there are eight letters: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight later, eight letters between the K and the S, and so they take the whole of these eight letters and they abbreviate those with the number eight, and so that become Kubernetes becomes K8s. All right, I just want to throw that out there really quick. Um, but when we talk about Kubernetes, the purpose of Kubernetes is that it is a, it's an open source environment that automates the orchestration of application containers. All right, so if you've been following along with this, uh, with this whole modern application journey that we've been on, you know that we started off talking about what is a modern application, some pillars of modern applications. And then last time we talked about containers. What is a container and why is it important? And so once we got done talking about the container discussion, now you can imagine that an application may have hundreds, maybe even thousands of different containers. And so at some point, you've got to kind of look around and say, I need something to orchestrate all this, right? And that's what Kubernetes does, right? So Kubernetes takes care of all the maintenance and tools around running application containers. So that is the, that's, the, that's the purpose. It was, uh, it was designed by Google, by the way, uh, several years ago. Now, it's, now there's a lot of different flavors of Kubernetes, um, but, th but that's, that's at its heart what it is. All right, so Kubernetes provides three core components for container orchestration. All right, so there's, there's three, and I'm just going to write them up here. Uh, one is the control plane. So I'll put control plane. And the, uh, the next one is the management plane. So I'll just put management plane. And these are different functions that Kubernetes performs. And then the third one is the data plane, all right? So the data plane. Okay, so the control plane, we'll get into this a little bit more here in a second. The control plane is the orchestration functions, the orchestration component that's responsible for the management of Kubernetes components like clusters and nodes and pods and networking among all those things. Uh, we'll talk about all those um, in here in just a second, but I just wanted to give you an idea of the control plane function within Kubernetes, right? The management plane function, this is the administration layer. Uh, this has components that administrators would use to interact with Kubernetes. Um, some of these components include like the Kubernetes API, things like custom resource definitions or manifest, those kinds of things. Uh, and then finally, the data plane, the, this is the function that handles the traffic layer, the traffic handling layer, all right? This has overlay and underlay networks among different nodes and pods and containers and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so, the, so these, are the, these are the three kind of core functions, if you will, within Kubernetes. So I wanted to, uh, wanted to mention a couple of other things that Kubernetes um, you know, provides or things that you can achieve with Kubernetes and the reason that people use Kubernetes so much is that it gives you high availability for your application, uh, it gives you scalability, and it gives you a, a disaster recovery. So you know you can you can recover from uh, from something going down. And if you if you kind of start to hyperlink back, as it were, to the pillars of a modern application, those are absolutely critical pillars. If you want to call your application a modern application, you need those things, right? If you remember back. All right. So within Kubernetes, I'm going to draw just a uh, a bit of a picture here. You have um, in, the, in the control plane function, you have uh, what's called a master node. So I'm going to just come right over here. Uh, so you have a master, master node. So you have this, you have this idea of nodes uh, that are defined within Kubernetes. And you have a master node that has several different components in it. We'll kind of build those out here in a second. And then you have a series of worker nodes. So I'm going to put uh, worker, worker nodes over here. And you can have multiple worker nodes. All right, I'll just put one right here just for the purposes of illustration. Um, but you have this idea of nodes, right? So within Kubernetes, you have a node that has different components in it. Uh, you have a master node and a worker node. And then when you put all of these different components within the nodes, then you can think of this entire package 
That's what's called a Kubernetes cluster, right? So you'll hear all these different terminologies. Uh, so you're talking about nodes and clusters and like, what does all that mean? So when you look at the entirety of all the, of a master node with its component worker nodes and all the different components within it, that's a Kubernetes cluster, okay? So the, the master node, the worker node, there within, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend a, just a quick second here on the, uh, on the worker node. Within each of the worker nodes, there are a couple of functions that Kubernetes provides. One of them is called a kubelet, so I'll put kubelet, and then there's also a kube proxy. All right, you can start to see some of the some of the nomenclature, some of the naming. Everything's like kube, kube, whatever, right? All right, so a kubelet is uh, it's a Kubernetes process that allows these worker nodes to talk to each other, um, and it it allows things like application processes to run, those kinds of things, right? Uh, so that's that's one of the one of the features of the kubelet. The kube proxy um, maintains network rules on these nodes, right? So these network rules allow network communication to your pods, which we'll get into pods here in a second, um, from network sessions inside or outside of your cluster. So remember this whole thing would be the cluster, right? Okay, so those are a couple of things within the worker node. We'll come back to the worker node here in a second, but I wanna come over to the master node again, uh, or here for just a quick second. The master node has a few key components to it. Um, one of those is the what's called an API server. So I'll put API server here. And the API server communicates with either a graphical user interface like a GUI or um, external APIs or a command line interface, but this is the this is what exposes the Kubernetes API to the outside you know, user world, right? Okay, so you have an API server and then you have uh, what's called a controller, controller manager, so I'll just put MGR right there, a controller manager. The controller manager keeps an eye on the cluster, right, the whole cluster, and, um, and it's, you know, it, it checks out to see if something needs to be repaired, uh, maybe something needs to be restarted, that kind of thing, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to control the cluster, if you will. All right, and then another thing is called the scheduler, scheduler, right? The scheduler is, is responsible for scheduling containers, and we'll get to the containers here in a second, on different nodes um, based on workload and server resources, those kinds of things, right? So again, if you can imagine, you, you may have hundreds or thousands of these nodes out here. The scheduler is gonna be responsible for, uh, for scheduling different containers based on, you know, like, a, like I just said, workload, server resources, those kinds of things, all right? So uh, the, the last thing that I'll mention here in the master node is, uh, is what's called the etcd, right? So this is like a daemon. Uh, this is a key value storage which contains uh, the current state of the Kubernetes cluster, this whole cluster. Uh, so you could, you could uh, think about this as like the, the source of truth. I'll just put SOT, that means, it stands for source of truth, right? So you can, you can literally recover the entire cluster based on the data that's contained in this etcd, right? Um, key value storage. So those are, those are critical components that are found within the master node. So I'm just gonna put a big old, you know, big, big old box around that. So the master node is a critical component. You must have a master node within Kubernetes, and then you must have at least one worker node, all right? So the worker node, contains a series of pods, what we call pods. So these, the kubelet and the kube proxy are the Kubernetes, you know, uh, functions that allow communication, those kinds of things, just like I said a second ago. Uh, but the actual, you know, heart of doing the work itself, like where's the application kind of a thing, that resides in um, a, a variety of pods. So you may have, I'll just put, you know, pod, pod, pod. You may have a, a number of pods and some of these, um, I'm just gonna put boxes around them, right, within this worker node, right? So now we've got, you know, this whole thing right here as a worker node. So you can start to see that there's a lot of components within, you know, each part of Kubernetes. All right, but within the pod, each pod has a container. I was gonna say it contains a container, right? Has a container. Sometimes it can, it can have multiple containers, but typically it just contains one container. It just has one container because that's really all it needs. Um, a pod is gonna get an IP address, so I'll, I'll put right there, which, um, which ultimately turns into what's called a service, so I'll put a service right here. And these, uh, I'll just put IP, IP, but ultimately it turns into what's called a service. But that IP is what allows communication, you know, to and from the pod, right? Um, and so 
uh, so you have these pods that have containers within them. So I'll just put, you know, if we go back to our last video, I'll just put a little like that. You know, remember these containers have just those, those critical key functions of, you know, application binaries and, uh, you know, some of the hardware dependencies, those kinds of things. So if you can imagine there's containers within the pod. Um, okay, these pods are created frequently. Let's say one, you know, one dies, then that's, that's where some of these controller managers scheduled or those kinds of things are going to say, hey, I just noticed that a pod died and I need to, I need to restart it, right? Um, okay, so again, within a worker node, you have these different Kubernetes functions, the kubelet and the kube proxy, um, and then you have a series of pods. And, and again, you can have multiple nodes um, that, uh, that are built out here, but I just drawn one for the purposes of this. All right, so um, the other thing that I want to mention is there is a Kubernetes configuration. So I'll, I'll put uh, a config right here that can be fed into, um, into the API server on the master node. And this is fed either via YAML, so I'll put YAML configuration or YAML or JSON, right? <clears throat> so it's either a YAML or JSON file. And this is fed into the API server. And this is the, this is the configuration that you want your Kubernetes cluster, right, to have. Um, so when a configuration is fed in, the controller manager is going to check to see if the desired state that is, uh, that is you know, defined here within the configuration file, does that desired state match the actual state of what's going on down here? You know, maybe you need more pods spun up. Maybe you need another, you know, container or another service defined. Maybe you need another node, whatever it is, right? So if, if that is not, uh, if that's not the actual state as, you know, as it stands when the configuration file is fed in, then the, uh, then the controller manager is going to say, hey, we need to get, we need to get after it, you know, let's get, let's get working, let's, let's spin that stuff up. Or likewise, maybe there's too many things to find right now. The configuration file says, hey, we don't need that many, and then we can start to spin down some things, right? So all of this stuff is that automated process, uh, you know, where changes are made wherever they're, wherever they're needed, right? And so, I, you know, suffice it to say, Kubernetes is, is extremely complex. There's a lot to it. And this is, this is just a very brief overview. Uh, maybe not so brief, right? Um, but it's, it's important to know just some of the, some of the very broad kind of, uh, you know, basic components of this. Uh, as you dig deeper into Kubernetes, you can get really deep into this stuff, and there's a lot of a lot of complex, you know, details that that you can get into. Um, but again, I wanted to wanted to go over the control plane, management plane, and data plane again, where again the control plane is the orchestration component responsible for management of the of the things like the the cluster, the nodes, right, um, or the pods, and then the management plane is the administration layer. That's where you're coming into like the Kubernetes API. Um, uh, you know, those kinds of things. So that's the, uh, the management plane. And then finally, the data plane. That's the, that's the traffic handling layer. That's the overlay and underlay networks among the nodes, among the pods. So again, if you can, if you can imagine more nodes out here, more pods, and then these need to communicate with each other, right? Um, so, you know, an application container, which would be here within a pod, uh, communicating with another application container in another pod is is participating in the data plane function of Kubernetes, right? So that's just a, that's just an example. Okay, so like I said, there's certainly much more to Kubernetes than just this, but hopefully this provides just a good overview of how Kubernetes um, is, you know, is organized and how it's all put together and how ultimately it provides this environment, you know, it provides this, this way of doing things uh, that automates the orchestration of application containers. So, hey, thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. If you like this thing, you can click up here on our DevCentral logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you guys out there in the community.